idol. The term was initially used in Japan to refer to foreign artists as in the western meaning of idol, an entertainer with a large following, usually comprised of young fans. Frank Sinatra was one of the musicians who popularized the term, a figure admired by enthusiastic young girls. But what about Japanese idols as we know them today? Many point to Matsuko Ashita as the origin of that concept. In 1933, she moved from Iwate Prefecture to Tokyo after being scouted by Shinjuku's Moulin Rouge Theatre. Her smile and cute looks rendered her modeling gigs in magazines and commercials, becoming one of the first gravure idols. At the time, gravure referred to the printing method of magazines, but it's currently synonymous of swimsuit and underwear photoshoots. During the Second World War, Soldiers often visited the Moulin Rouge Theater to see Matsuko. She would get on the stage, hold their hands and thank them for their service, wishing them good luck. Around the same time, one of Japan's most beloved singers, Hibari Misora, became hugely popular due to her beautiful voice and looks. People started calling idols to young entertainers whose main purpose goes beyond talent and performing abilities. Instead, they sell dreams and provide solace to people who need it. In 1953, a comedian named Johnny Kitagawa came to Japan as an English interpreter after a successful career in San Francisco. He started training a baseball team, which ended up being called the Johnnies. In a rainy day and unable to practice, he took his team to see a performance of West Side Story. The boys were so moved by the musical that Johnny decided to launch them in the entertainment business and founded his own agency called Johnny's Entertainment. The group Johnny's debuted in 1962. Being heavily inspired by stage plays, Kitagawa gave the Johnny's formal training in New York. From then on, Johnny's affiliated idols received years of training before their debut, like what can be seen today in the K-pop industry. Johnny's entertainment pretty much monopolizes the male idol industry, with mainly solo artists until the mid-80s and groups such as Hikaru Genji and SMAP from the late 80s until today. During the 1960s, the music industry started allowing independent producers to come forward with their ideas for young aspiring talents, and the term idol became a buzzword to promote them. While seen as a lesser form of performing, the public appreciated seeing unpolished and down to earth individuals becoming superstars. In the early 70s, Saori Minami, Maria Machi, and Humiko Koyanagi were dubbed the Sani Musume the most popular three idols, a trend which went back to the 1950s. In their acting, modeling and singing, they personified the idea of youth and first experiences, such as in Minami's hit Juna Nasai, or 17 years old. This solidified the foundation for the traditional Japanese idol. While studying in the Tokyo Conservatory of Music, three girls were noticed by a producer and debuted in 1972 as Han, Su and Miki a trio known as Candies. You might recognize these names from a certain anime series. They show very distinct characters during performances and TV appearances, especially during Conto segments, small comedy skits in which all kinds of celebrities will join. The talent show Startanjo started in 1971 and launched the career of several idols, such as the duo Pink Lady, which debuted in 1976. They revolutionized the idol genre with flashy outfits easy to remember choreographies and music inspired in foreign mystery series with the hinge of comedy. Pink Lady were dubbed by the media as Candy's rivals, as this showed a shyer image, even though the two groups got along well. However, one of the first big discoveries of Star Tanjo was a new female trio, the Hana no Chusan Trio. Junko Sakurada, Masako Mori and Momoe Yamaguchi would each be to release three to four singles and the same number of albums per year. Momoe became the most popular because she displayed the most innocent image, which contrasted with the sexual innuendos in the lyrics of her songs. For example, the hit song Hitonatsu no Keiken included the phrase I will give you a girl's most important thing. In 1975, Momoe was able to pick a new team to compose her songs. She chose Ryudo Uzaki as composer, a musician with a rock background. He teamed up with his wife, Yoko Aki, who, like Yamaguchi, had grown up in the port town of Yokosuka. This inspired her to write Yokosuka Story, one of Momoe's biggest hits, and the team would stay together until the end of her career. This creative freedom also allowed Momoe to record in several different countries and explore more music genres. 
Besides singing, Momoe was also prolific as an actress, and was frequently paired with Tomokazu Miura, another popular actor. In 1980, at the height of her career and age 21, she decided to marry Miura and retire from the entertainment business altogether, with a final concert in Japan's emblematic Budokan Arena. She is still together with her husband and has rarely showed up in public again, earning a legendary status in the Japanese music industry and remaining one of the most beloved idols ever. 1980 also marked the debut of Seiko Matsuna, winner of a magazine contest her first single, Hadashi no Kisetsu, was picked as the theme song for a commercial, followed by the nationwide hit, Aoi Sango Show. Seiko presented very cutesy gestures and appearance, which originated the term Buriko. Her haircut became known as Seiko Cut, and is until now a symbol of 80s idols. Seiko was a national phenomenon with sales records that remained unmatched for many years. She is still active after a long and eventful career that neither marriage nor childbirth could stop becoming known as Japan's eternal idol. Momoe and Seiko proved the general public that idols weren't just lesser forms of performing, but had the potential to become trendsetters and inspire a generation. Thus, the golden age of idols began. The show star Tanjo was responsible for a number of successful 1982 idol debuts, known as the class of 82. Some of them were Chiemi Hori, Iyo Matsumoto, Yu Hayami and Kyoko Koizumi. Kyon Kyon, as Koizumi was affectionately known, was one of the most successful idols of the 80s, contrasting with Seiko by presenting a more cheerful and tomboyish image. Along with other names such as Hiroko Yakushimaru, she progressed to a versatile acting career. Idol movies were usually simple and not taken seriously, so Koizumi helped to bring more credibility to idols pursuing the acting field. One of the 1982 girls made history by getting the highest score in the history of Star Tanjo. Her name was Akina Nakamori. Akina started being promoted as a second coming of Momo Yamaguchi and media placed her as Seiko Matsuda's rival. Akina was not cutesy but rather Tsupari, a rebellious girl. Like Momoe, as years passed, Nakamori started getting more creative input towards her work and invited renowned names of Japanese music to collaborate in her songs. In 1985, with the single Meu Amore, she became the youngest artist to win the Japanese Record Awards Grand Prix, which can be considered the Japanese Grammy. The next year, she released Desire, promoting the song with a customized kimono, boots and a bob wig, a hairstyle copied by many women. Desire granted Akina her second Japanese Record Awards Grand Prix, and she became the first person to win the award two years in a row. Nakamori is still one of Japan's most beloved female artists, with a long career that encompasses several music genres and acting work. Many idols would go on to become talented artists, as the meaning of idol was still linked to innocence and growth. High school and college students with little experience in the show business were chosen to become assistants in the TV show All Night Fuji, aired on Fuji TV. This kind of freshness captivated viewers and led lyricist Yasushi Akimoto to partner with the network, forming the group Onyanko Club in 1985. They would star in the show Yuya Kenyanya. And since many of them were still studying, more and more girls kept being added to keep a rotation system, each of them having a number. Thus, the first large idol group was created. Onyanko Club was also one of the first groups to have a love band which meant members were not allowed to have romantic relationships in order to keep the illusion of being devoted entirely to the fans. It also introduced the concept of graduation, used when an idol decides to leave a group of her own will. Onyanko Club graduated as a group in 1987. In 1985, Seiko Matsuda was married and mother of one, and although her career didn't stop, she had a bit more mature image, being known as Mamado. Media started dubbing Yukiko Okada as Post Seiko after her debut in 1984. Backed by notorious names of the music industry, such as Maria Takeuchi and Seiko herself, Yukiko achieved the number one place on national charts with her 1986 single Kuchibiru Network. However, things would take a dramatic turn in April 8, 1986, when Yukiko lost her life by jumping from her record label's building. Coincidentally or not, the idol industry also took a turn around this time. Girl bands were getting more popular, and Japanese music was trying to get closer to American and European trends such as Eurobeats, 
women wanted to emancipate themselves and to look cool, mature and sexy, in opposition to the cutesy and submissive idol image. Bishojo or Beautiful Girl was the new trend, leading to many idols changing their appearance and marketing strategy, and many models becoming idols instead of the opposite. Some of the most popular idols in the late 80s were former Onyanko club Shizuka Kudo, the aerobic duo of Wink, and Shizato Moritaka. Moritaka was born in Kumamoto Prefecture and spent her high school years as a drummer in a band. In 1996, she won a modeling audition and moved to Tokyo, where she started her music career, writing most of the lyrics for her own songs and sometimes playing the instruments herself. She would achieve national success in 1989 with the cover of Saori Minami's Juna Nasai. With a beautiful figure and long straight dark hair, as was the trend at the time, she wore colorful costumes with very short skirts and provided plenty of fan service. She even made a song acknowledging her lack of singing ability but also her desire for success. As she progressed into the 90s, Shisato started exploring different music genres and toning down her image while remaining hugely popular. She is still active as both a singer and TV host, and her beauty remains unchanged at the age of 50. 1989 marked the beginning of the Heisei era in Japan. The economic bubble burst and the public was seeking for more seriousness in the entertainment industry. Most 80s idols either stopped activity or transitioned exclusively to either singing, acting or modeling, and new idols had trouble establishing their careers as the genre was losing popularity. This period is called the Idol Winter Era. At the same time, Tetsuya Komuro, a techno and dance composer, launched some of the most popular artists of the early 90s, such as Nami Amuro. She was young, good-looking and popularized the Amura fashion style, but she was not promoted as an idol. The same marketing model was followed by artists such as Tomomi Kahara and the group Speed. The concept of Seiyu Idol originated during the 80s but had significant growth in the mid to late 90s, associated to the Sailor Moon voice actresses, known as Peach Hips, and Megumi Hayashibara, voice of the popular character Hayaya Nami in 1998's Neon Genesis Evangelion. In 1997, Tsunku, leader of the rock band Sharam Q, held an audition for a female vocalist in the talent show Asaya. After the winner was chosen, he had five of the runner-ups record a single, and offered them a debut if they sold 50,000 copies of the single in 5 days. They succeeded and formed the group Morning Musume. During Japan's economic crisis, the hopeful lyrics of their single Love Machine, along with the fun and catchy instrumental, made for the group's big national break. Since then, they have been one of the top idol groups in Japan and revitalized the idol genre. Morning Musume's system was inspired by Onyanko Club, but instead of having individual numbers, each new group of members formed a generation. The producer Tsunku formed an agency called Hello Project and launched new idol groups. A research student system was then implemented. New girls would pass a training period until they got promoted to a main group. Morning Musume fans also popularized practices that would become common in idol concerts, such as performing dances known as Watage, composing mixes which are chants shouted during the songs, and holding colored pen lights to cheer for their favorite members, as each one would have her own color. In 2002, three girls from Hiroshima Actors School released an independent single as the local idol group Perfume. After years of activity in their home prefecture, they started visiting Tokyo to perform in shows related to the budding Akihabara scene, which promoted pop culture such as idols and anime. This led to their leap into a major debut with Yasutaka Nakata, one half of the techno-pop duo Capsule, and left behind their idol origins, aiming for a more techno and mature concept. Perfume are currently one of Japan's most successful girl groups, both nationally and internationally. Noticing Akihabara's importance as a pop culture hub, in 2005, former Onyanko club producer Yasushi Akimoto started an idol group called AKB48. AKB means Akihabara, and 48 was based on the name of partner company Office 48. The main concept of the group is Idols You Can Meet. They have a theater in Akihabara where they perform daily, initially in three rotating teams, A, K and B. However, the number of members kept increasing as new generations joined, 
and there are now 5 teams and over 100 members. One day, as replacement for a sudden cancellation of a theater performance, AKB48 held a handshake event. As the name suggests, fans could shake hands and exchange a few words with the idols. This became a regular event for which fans can get tickets inside AKB48 singles. This kind of close contact events was adopted by several idol groups, some of them also including pictures with the members. AKB48 also pioneered other kinds of events with fan participation, such as the Senbatsu election, which selected the most popular members to be featured in the main song of a new single. These strategies increased AKB48 sales exponentially, making them the best-selling idol group in history and immortalizing them as national idols. The group has since expanded to the rest of Japan and even other countries with their sister group. AKB has lots of girls with very different personalities and appearances, in order to cater to many fans and make them choose their favorite member, also called Oshime. In 2011, AKB48 producer Yasushi Akimoto launched a self-proclaimed rival group called Nogizaka46, where girls have a more refined and uniform image. Instead of a theater, they have a weekly variety show on TV, but also hold handshake events. In recent years, Nogizaka has surpassed AKB in terms of public recognition. Their sister group Keakizaka46 also became very popular, especially with younger demographics, captivated by their relatable lyrics and serious image. In 2010, the number of idol acts was the largest ever, starting the idol warring states, an analogy to the historical period when the lack of a unified government started a civil war in Japan. Many girls wanted to become the next national idol. The first edition of Tokyo Idol Festival was also held in 2010, featuring not only big names of the industry, but also upcoming local idols such as Niigata's Negiko and Fukuoka's Rev from DVL, the group of internet star Kana Hashimoto. According to the Japanese Local Idol Activity Association, as of June 17, 2017, there were 942 local idols in Japan, which excludes the 500 Tokyo-based acts. One of the central figures of the early 2010s was the group Momohiro Clover Z. They were known as weekend heroines. Since all the members were in school, they could only perform on Saturdays and Sundays, usually with small street shows. Inspired by Sentai series and pro wrestling, each girl has her own color, which is tied to her character, and the group's sound is very rock-inspired. They started being invited to rock festivals, an unusual feat for an idol group until then, collaborating with famous bands such as Kiss, and becoming the first female idol act to perform at the stadium. Sakura Gakuin was another idol group active around this time. Like in Japanese schools, they have thematic clubs, one of them being the Metal Music Club. This was the origin of Baby Metal, one of the very first idol groups to become mainstream outside of Japan, as their demographic went beyond idol fans to appeal to metal enthusiasts as well. After going viral on YouTube, foreign media started noticing the group, which led to increasing overseas performances and their first world tour in 2014. Parallel to real-life idols, the multimedia project Love Life brought a new dimension to Seiyu Idols. The group Muse was formed simultaneously in two-dimensional and real-life format, with the voice actresses given as much attention and promotion as their counterpart characters. While Seiyu Idols was not a new concept, Love Live achieved national success instead of being bound to anime fans, eventually expanding overseas where anime was already a huge market. But up until now, we have covered mostly groups that rose to fame through mass media and street performances. However, the underground idol scene was becoming more significant, and one of its main figures was a group created in 2010. A solo singer called Pului teamed up with her producer to create Peace, short for Brand New Idol Society. They became known for their anti-idol stance as they would show up naked in the Aokigahara suicide forest, hold bets in school swimsuits, and present bald heads as a parody to an AKB48 dating scandal. Since their disbandment in 2014, there have been two revivals with toned down concepts, and their producer Junosuke Watanabe established the agency WAC, launching new nationally acclaimed groups such as Beach. Along Beast, other groups opened the doors to the current idol world. 
which is no longer bound to a traditional pop sound and cutesy image, but tackles a variety of genres and diversity of concepts. Groups such as Tempagumi Inc. and Niji no Conquistador promote idols as pop culture geeks who like games and anime, celebrating acceptance. Underground idol concerts are more than a music performance, but also a place where fans can easily participate in small meet and greets and take Polaroid pictures, raise money to celebrate their favorite member's birthday, and socialize with each other. The world is going through a pandemic and idols that relied in direct fan contact had to create new ways of marketing, such as concerts with low or no attendance and online signature events. New trends are emerging, such as the relevance of K-pop idols. Some groups include Japanese members, such as TWICE, while others are produced in Japan by Korean companies like Niju. No matter what challenges the future might bring to the industry, if history has something to tell us about Japanese idols, is that no matter what, they are able to reinvent themselves.